Okay, we are going to work with some absolute positioning. Now with absolute positioning, um, you can specifically code where you want content to display. You can also have content overlapping. And a lot of people will do that for aesthetic purposes. It, um, it, it looks good in whatever they're working on. So you can see I kind of made the boxes a little transparent so we'll be able to see through them so we can actually see which box is on top and which box is on bottom. And for the source, this looks very similar to what you've already seen. Okay, the box itself is created using the div. And then these different IDs, D1 through D4, um, apply the background color and I made them 50% transparent so that we would be able to see what was under them. Now we get for the, to the fun part, the actual positioning of these. This is going to be our end result. Now, how did we get there? We have to very specifically position each one of the boxes. So we have to tell the browser we are using absolute positioning. And we put that in the division tag because that's the tag that is actually creating those boxes. Then in each one of the D tags, the D1 through D4, we are giving it a top and a left setting. And you only really need to give it two settings. Now you can do top and left, you can do bottom and right, okay? but you need to give it a vertical and a horizontal setting. So we're choosing top and left. And so for the top, we're saying the red box is going to be 120 down, and it's going to be 20 in from the left. And its reference point is the containing box, which is the section. Uh, section contains all of the divisions. So they're kind of constrained by how wide section is. So section is only 700 pixels. So all of these boxes are living in that space. So when we say top 120 and left 20, it's using that constraining box as a reference point. So when we say that, it's gonna be 120 down from the top of the box, 20 in from the left of the box. Okay, so we've got the red position, the green is 175 from the top, 150 from the left. Okay, so you can see it's further down and further in. The blue is a little bit closer to the top. So that's got a top setting of 75, left setting of 200. And then we get down to yellow, which is the furthest from the left with 320. And it's only 150 from the top. Now by default, how these render is the first box that it encounters goes on the bottom. So the red box should be on the bottom. On top of the red box, we got the green box. Then we've got the blue box. The yellow is going to be on the very top, okay? Because it renders them in order. And this is called a stacking order, okay? The first element in encounters goes on the bottom. You can change that order using the Z index. And if you assign a high value to the Z index, that element or content is going to be on top. So if we want the red to be on the top, we're gonna to give it a pretty high Z index. So I gave it 100. Now, if I want the green to display next, I'm giving that a pretty high number as well. Not bigger than 100, but still a pretty high number. I'm giving it, I gave it 90. If I want the yellow one on the very bottom, then I'm gonna give that a one because okay, I want that to be the bottom. And then for the blue one, I actually want that above the yellow, but below the green. So I could have chosen a number between two and 89. I just chose two because it was simple, okay? So that is why the Z index is why these are displaying in the stacking order that you see, because red had a value of 100, it is on top. Green had a value of 90, so it's next. Uh, blue had a value of two, so that comes third. Yellow, value of one, on the bottom. 
Okay, so you can control the positioning and you can control what items display on top.